lovers from all over welcome to the show thank you so much this is the weekly beer and video review show with me travel man dan and i am pumped up and ready to go as you can see i have my red turtle back on we're gonna get into that a little bit later but we got a fun show who's in the chat we who's here watching give me a like let me know you're here welcome to the show and let's go ahead and get started i am pumped up junatic is here welcome junatic thank you so much um guys i want to just introduce you um if you're new to the show or if you're a long time member of the show welcome and let me tell you a little bit if you're new what we do here we go ahead and we review beers and videos and uh well hey nate what's up man all right good to have you here bro uh, yes, I'm doing the turtleneck today. So, on the show, we go ahead and review two beers. I got some really fun ones. Hey, what's up, Jens? I got some really fun beers today. And then, while we're doing the beers, I go ahead and talk about the videos that came out last week on my channel. And I preview the video that is coming out this week on my channel. All while going through, reviewing, talking about the videos, talking about the beer. I have fun little segments like... What would you rather? We have a segment called Show and Tell. We have one of our favorites called This Day in History. And soon we're going to have a new segment to the show called Eat It or Not. Oh man, I am pumped up. So welcome to the show. Whether you've been here a bunch or this is your first time, it's time to get started. And we have some wonderful beers today. Oh, I'm so pumped up. So <clears throat> let's go ahead. First of all, I want to wish you all a happy Valentine's Day. I hope that you're having fun. Maybe you had a little morning action. Maybe you're going to have a little afternooner, whatever it is. I hope that you guys are having a good time, that you're with your significant other, your sweethearts. Um, unfortunately, Travel Man Dan does not have a sweetheart. Um, I'm not married. I have uh, no girlfriend. <laughs> so I'm solo. I'm here with you guys. But we're still going to have a great time. My chocolate will be beer. Although I do have some chocolate from my good viewer friend, Drunatic. We have your chocolate here. Okay, we will be snacking on this. This is my Valentine. Okay, so thank you so much, Drunatic. Um, I will be eating chocolate later. But today's beer is going to be a fun one. And... Um, this one, I'm a little worried about. All right, guys. So uh, let me get into it. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> My chocolate will be beer. <laughs> yes, it will this day. Okay, so this one is brought to us from a brewing company called The Lost Abbey. And it is called Serpent Stout. It is an imperial start, stout. It is 11% alcohol. All right. So we're definitely going to be uh, cruising with some booze. And uh, take a look at it. <laughs> look at this thing. It is huge. All right. First of all, I know it looks like a wine bottle. It is, um, well, it is, I'm trying to see what the alcohol percent is is one full pint it's like a wine bottle right check out that cap but look at the label we'll get into that when we do the scoring system but check it out you got adam and eve the original bangers all right do it from the beer bottle uh, next time i'll bring it uh for the draft you got the original bangers right there and they're they got their uh privates covered up by a snake and um well this is what we're going to be drinking today. I think it's one of those barrel-aged um, oak barrel imperial stout. Right? We've had one before. We'll be, yes, yes, I will be drunk. Jens, I definitely will be drunk. So, so hang on. Okay, guys, this is going to be a fun one. Hang with me. I don't even know how the hell you open this thing. I'm going to point it at you if it pops off. All right, I think you untwist this wire. Okay, all right. Uh, check it out. Okay, so it's got this little gadget. All right, this little cage right here. That looks like a bar stool, right? All right, have a seat, man. Pull up. <laughs> Dad, all right. Welcome, Dad. Check it out. We're drinking this Serpent's Stout. It's a giant bottle. It is 11%. And look at this little, um, like, little bar stool that they give you. It's actually a little cage for the cork. Now, I don't know how to decork this thing. Um, I guess I'll... I guess I'll wiggle it a little bit. I don't know if it's going to explode. All right. I don't know how the hell you even open this thing. Oh, you just pull it. All right. <laughs> Nostrovia. <laughs> All right. All right. So there we go. It's got a little cork. 
I don't know. <laughs> Be -oo. All right. So here we go. First smell of the Serpent Stout. Oh, yeah. It's definitely smelling like a Valentine's Day chocolate. I don't know how to decor this thing. <laughs> yeah, we missed Mark. We missed my dad. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, going from the picture, we got the original bangers, Adam and Eve. And, um, you know, the smell smells very chocolatey and the stout so right away uh you know we're bringing in the uh, valentine's day spirit so let's go ahead and pour the sucker open or, oh yeah that thing is dark look at that oh man this thing is gonna be delicious you can smell it it's got such a strong smell of mocha coming off of this glass as they pour it in there look at this all right this one is really really looking good and there it is, guys. There is the Serpent's Stout from Lost Abbey. Let me put that giant bottle down. 11%. All right. Ga <laughs> Gas City. Okay. All right. Well, you know, that's one way to look at it, my friend. But check it out. There it is. We can see that how dark the beer is. It's got a little bit of head. I love the caramel look to the head on that one. Super dark is right. Let's go in for a swig and I'll let you know what it tastes like. Okay. <coughs> Whoa. <coughs> Whoa. It's strong. Okay. All right. Well, whew. So, all right, guys, cheers, June Tick, happy Valentine's Day. I'm going to tell you guys right now, this is definitely going to be a shit show of a show. Um, I can feel it, that first sip, <laughs> it's got some kick to it. Um, it's got that uh, strong aroma of chocolate. Cheers, Jens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it definitely has that mocha flavor. All throughout the sip. I took a big healthy chug of it. But as you're drinking it. As you're done with it. You get a little bit of a zing. A little bit of that uh, flavor. Of some type of whiskey or. Hey Uncle John is here. Yes. Uncle John we missed you. Happy Valentine's Day sweetheart. Alright. Good to see you. Alright. Hell yeah. My godfather is in the house. Okay, Uncle John, we are drinking this thing. It's going to be crazy today. All right, I don't know what this is. It came with this wild cork in it. And um, to be honest with you, you never know what you're going to get with these. I mean, these are way, way craftier than craft beers, right? I mean, you know the IPAs that we like to drink on this show. You know the stuff that I review. But this thing is definitely something. I feel, I feel like I should be in some type of medieval castle in the basement, in the lower dwellings. <laughs> That's the nut buster. Yeah. I mean, this thing is it's got some kick to it. So going to be fun as we go ahead and drink more of it. Thank you guys for hopping on the show. I'm going to pour some more. It is a full pint, and already I can feel that buzz going to hit me. And um, Well, thanks for joining me, guys. Let me talk about the video that came out last week on the show, on my channel. If you haven't checked it out, be sure to check it out. It is one of the Fast Food Friday videos. You <laughs> Well, thank you, Uncle John. You know, I had to bust out the turtleneck. Um, but I had to bring back a fun place, uh, a local place to when I was home in Buffalo, New York, a place that I grew up eating, a place that, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not really keen on eating when it comes to fast food. People love it in local Buffalo area, but it's called Mighty Taco. And if you haven't seen that video, the bottle is so big, you can fit in there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I should have pulled out. I'm pulling out that next week. But, um, but yeah, it was, um... Mighty Taco video. Mighty Taco is on par if you live here in the United States with like Taco Bell and uh, Del Taco. It's your fast food taco place. But they had a really good thing that I tried. It's called the Banderito. And um, it is a burrito with chicken and steak inside of it. And the chicken is seasoned with that buffalo sauce that we like on our chicken wings. And just the whole mashup of it all was really good. And uh, I had a couple of Mighty Tacos, finished it off with an empanada, and then put the put the uh, 
the, the icing on the cake was the Loganberry drink. If you've never seen what Loganberry is, check out that video. I know it's, um, it's pretty popular in Buffalo and pretty much western New York. I don't know how east of New York or uh, south it goes down to Pennsylvania if they even have it. Uh, I've only seen it. I've seen it in parts of Rochester back when I was younger. But anyway, if you're interested in it, it's, um, it's a really fun drink called Loganberry, and it's on that video. Mighty Taco. Actually, I was impressed with it. Happy Valentine's Day! Hey, Cindy! Cindy, you're going to like what's coming up next. Happy Valentine's Day to you. And, um, you know, I also wore red for something else that I'm going to bring up that is going on right now. This isn't the only holiday right now. But, um, but yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. Good to have you here, Cindy. And if you haven't checked it out, check out my video on Mighty Taco. You might be inspired to go get some fast food tacos. Hey guys, if you're just hopping on or you just joined, this is what we are drinking, this dark as hell beer. It is called the Serpent Stout. It is from the Lost Abbey. It's such a really weird novelty beer. It's like the, a huge bottle of wine. It's 11%. And let's go back in for a swig. <sighs> wow. All right. It's strong. It's really, really strong. I gotta be honest with you. It's um, it tastes like you're drinking uh, like um, a Jameson with uh with a shot. I'm sorry. What do they call the the where you drop the shot in the beer? Uh, Steamrollers or something? Yeah. It tastes like you're drinking a Guinness with a shot of Jameson in it. That's exactly what it tastes with, with a little bit of hint of chocolate going on in there. Um, I can feel it still burning right here and I don't know if that's the strength of the alcohol but it is really really strong you know these type of beers you're not going to belly up to a volleyball game or you're not going to go to a, uh, an outdoor party and expect to drink a good five six of these this is like one beer as you're out watching the moon type thing or you're finishing up on dinner and you know you maybe had something light but you want a heavy beer this thing is powerful. This thing is strong. I'm already two sips into it, and I can feel myself getting a little flush. Later in the show, as I drink the whole thing, you're probably going to see my eyes start to close a little bit. Um, but yeah, still having fun, really enjoying it. Wanted to try something new. I wanted to try something really interesting. And, um, you know, for stouts not being very popular at the, la the first part of my drinking career, I'm actually starting to be really turned on by them. I actually really enjoy the thick creaminess. Like, you can see how thick and, and, and strong this beer looks just by how black it is. You know, you know darker beers tend to be a little bit stronger, but it's got a really creamy, floaty, milky taste to it mixed in there with that, like, mocha flavor. Yes, it is definitely strong, but, but the stout itself is like a really nice dessert beer. And uh, really enjoying this Serpent Stout. Not bad at all. All right, moving right along. We're going on to COVID-19 talk. I hope you guys are all safe. I know the vaccine is being pulled out more and more here in California. They just increased the people that can get the vaccine from 16 years old to 75 if you have any pre-existing ailing conditions. Now, they have this like list, obviously the elderly people and the frontline workers went first. I don't know how it is in your area, in your country, in uh, your city, but um, maybe you have something similar. But um, my regular job, as I continue to work on Travel Man Dan, is I work in the construction field. So I'm wondering if they're considering bumping up the vaccine for people that are in essential fields that are considered essential businesses. I'm curious to see how that's gonna play out. Um, I did see in Kansas City that uh, they're going ahead and they're able to make the vaccine available to all meat packing people. Obviously, people with COVID, um, you have to keep the production of meat and the whole system of it working so that you can ship out food for people. And obviously, you don't want people being sick inside your factory because you're in close proximity. You're working with meat. You don't know how that stuff is transferred. So they went ahead and they've now made it. Um, I don't know if it's a state sanction or a federal sanction. I'm not really too sure. But they've allowed uh, people that are working in the meatpacking industry in the Midwest to go ahead and be uh, able to get the vaccine no matter what age there are as long as they're working in that industry I hope that they have that for me personally because in the construction field 
uh, construction industry is considered essential here in California, and we are in, you know, going out each and every day. Things haven't really slowed down, and I'd like to get my vaccine shot as soon as possible. Obviously, being uh, that the frontline workers and the elderly get their shot first. But hey, we'll see what happens. Let me know down in the comments if you want to go ahead and comment on that, how your city, how your state, how your country is dealing with it. Hopefully you guys are okay. Maybe you don't want to take the vaccine. Look, I'm not I'm not going to sit here on the soapbox and sit there and cry to you that the vaccine, that you should get it and stuff. That's your decision. I understand that. And um, you know how we are on the show. We're very neutral. So, you know, whether it's for you or you're not going to get it, that's up to you. Uh, I'm not the one to say. So we're going to speed that up. We're going to move on and we're going to go ahead. I'm going to be drinking this beer a lot faster. Guys, how many people we got in the room? We have eight people in the room. Please go ahead and hit that like button. Like this video so that YouTube, when it sees more people in the room, it sees watch time, it sees likes, then they go ahead and suggest my videos to random people. And then random people are able to watch them so the more that you like a video the more that you comment on a video it sends the algorithm in YouTube to go ahead and suggest it to basically grab these videos and say you know what people actually are watching this guy people actually like this guy and, you know let's go ahead and suggest it to other people you know when you open up your YouTube and you have all those suggested videos those are based off of what people enjoy but if you scroll down to like the fourth and fifth and sixth they give you stuff that's not really um, uh, based off the algorithm of what you previously watched. It's just random stuff. Well, that random stuff is stuff that YouTube slides in there off of likes. And already I can see how you guys are, are listening. I thank you so much. I would give you this beer if I could, especially you, Uncle John. It's so happy. We are so pumped up to see Uncle John. Cheers to Uncle John being back, guys. And here we go. Oh yeah, that's really good. It's got a smooth, it's got a, almost like a caramel taste to it. Um, like a, a, a burnt syrup flavor. The aftertaste is nice. Really enjoying this Serpent's Stout. I mean, coming out of the bottle, you can see it's just like, it's like black water. Really? You're drinking mud, dude? All right. Anyway, guys, I'm wearing red because it's Valentine's Day. But I'm also wearing red. Yeah, yeah. I'm also wearing red because of, well, I don't want to say, yeah, I, I will say it's one of my favorites. Hey, Calvin, what's up? Just thank you so much. Afraid to take the vaccine. I understand, Calvin. You know, most people that are opposed to it are. We're not going to get into it. That's your personal decision. And, um, you know, I can respect that either way. So, you know, uh, hopefully... Um, that uh, science and data and things will come back. That the vaccine is okay to take, and you'll feel better. And I don't know where this. I don't know where this is going. But anyway, I want to talk about why I'm wearing red. Not only because of Valentine's, Calvin. Maybe you can relate. But I know Cindy is here, guys. And I just wanted to say to each and every one of you guys, to uh, especially all my friends in China and all my Chinese friends. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, data from the Goonies. <laughs> I want to say, Xinyan Kwai Le, or Gong Si Fa Hey, yes, what's up, Frank? I love it. The beer team, Travel Man Dan beer team. Guys, this is Chinese New Year, and we're right in the thick of things. Um, I believe uh, Cindy is the Chinese, obviously. Ch yeah, Cindy is Chinese. <laughs> beer all time. So, Happy New Year, Chinese. Uh, happy Chinese New Year, Cindy. Um, Chinese New Year for me is one of my favorite times of the year because I connect with all my friends in China. Uh, my Weixing pops off. Happy Chinese New Year, Jens. Um, it, I spent years in China and I had a great time. Now, I will say uh, that Chinese New Year, a bunch of times I left China. So uh, I wasn't actually in China for like two 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 years. I think I, I, I went to Thailand with Nate, I think. Um, but it's just, if you've never been and seen a holiday like this, <laughs> it is crazy, man. Just imagine all of our Christian or Western holidays. Like you have your Christmas, your Easter, your Thanksgiving. You have, um, you know, uh, Valentine's Day, all the smaller other holidays. And they're all swelled into one thing, okay? And the Chinese New Year is also the biggest migration of people. I mean, you have the cities like Beijing, Shanghai, Chongqing, okay? 
fire <laughs> we're gonna get into that uh guangzhou and and in hong kong and in uh, taipei and people just just go back home right i mean it's like a two week no, nobody does nothing um i remember being in shanghai for the one year and it was just absolutely dead and shanghai has got like 29 million people like just in the inner part of the city and it's crazy how it is because they do go nuts with the fireworks oh my gosh on, on the golden hour in shanghai it literally starts at 12 o'clock at night and it does not stop until 6 a.m and you know the grand finale, the end of a firecracker uh, display, whether you're at a baseball game, whether you're at a, a, a party, or whether you're at a rave, or whatever you're at, there's always the grand finale. But in China, when they start that golden hour, I'm not, I'm not even kidding you, it goes from 12 midnight to 6, 7 a.m., just fireworks one after another, and like... I lived in the middle part of the city on like the 36th floor and firecrackers are blowing up like literally right outside my window. It's a really fun time for people to be around their families, to reunite with all their people um, back in their home their home villages and stuff like that. I like the beer team. Yeah, I like the beer team too. That's awesome. Travel man, Dan, beer team. Okay. All right. I got the wheels are spinning. Okay. <clears throat> now... One of the things I really liked about China is all the food during Chinese New Year. And Cindy, I'm sure you miss it tons. Um, we're going to get into that later when I do the What Would You Rather segment. Um, and you know, hopefully we'll be able to see some Chinese food from Nate from Eat It or Not. Um, it's a new segment we're going to be pulling on the show. But yeah, just an amazing time. Happy Chinese New Year. This is the year of the ox. Okay, the year of the ox. Just if you believe in this kind of thing, if you believe in like the whole, um, I don't know what it is, uh, horoscopes, Chinese New Year's, whatever. I just want to go ahead and let you know what the year of the ox means. It's uh, in the Chinese tradition, ox is a faithful friend that made great contributions to the development of society. Right, so people born on the year of the ox have this this aura of them. Okay, like the ox, people born in the year of the ox are industrious, cautious, and they hold their faith firmly, and always glad to offer help. Really solid people, right? Just like an ox, right? Just just a solid, you know, um, strong person. And uh, I think uh, whatever that means to you, you can go ahead and Google it. You can see what your sign is. Um, I was born the year of the snake, so this is not my year. But uh, really, um, really interesting. And uh, when you look at horoscopes, you know, how much of it is, is bullshit and how much of it is actual... Um, truth and how do these people find this how do they come up with this stuff we don't know but um uh, if you're interested in it uh check it out the chinese new year this is the year of the ox um they definitely love their little single firecrackers one thing that um that kind of sucks for me is uh, usually every year when i'm here in los angeles i do the chinese new year parade with my kung fu team and uh monkey here nice jen's Okay, I go out and I, and I walk with my Shifu and they play the drums and we do our Kung Fu uh, like forms and stuff. And so, uh, unfortunately, second monkey, yes. Unfortunately, I'm not able to go out, obviously, because of COVID. They have canceled the parade. It's usually a big, epic, really fun thing to see here in Los Angeles and Chinatown. Um, but unfortunately, we're not able to do it. So, Shifu, uh, Buhaisa, maybe next year we'll be able to go and, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. So, uh, definitely going to miss that. But um, I'm, I'm bringing the spirit of the Chinese New Year here to the studio, here to my little spot. I'm having fun. I'm enjoying myself. I'm actually going to watch a Chinese movie later. Um, just enjoying that part of my life that I've really enjoyed. Um, you know, being over in China for so long, it just really makes you uh, eye-opening to all the different... I'm not sure what I am in Chinese. Okay, so check it out, Jonathan. Just type in your birthday. You can go to like a Chinese cal calendar and you can find out what you are. And it's the opposite of it. Uh, what's up? <laughs> yes. All right. What's up, Madman Gas? Welcome to the show. All right. Thank you so much for showing. You've got the good spirit of Chinese here. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. I appreciate it. Guys, if you're just hopping on, this is what we're drinking. Um, I'm as red as my shirt. I remember taking a train from Beijing to Xi'an on New Year's Eve because see fireworks. Oh, that's beautiful. That's that's what I'm talking about right there, you know. 
get taking those train yards. Yeah, check it out. But this is what we're doing now. We're doing the Serpent Stout. It's a strong, weird beer that I pulled off the shelf. It's by uh, Lost Abbey. It's 11%, so I'm definitely going to be slurring. And let's go ahead. Let's go suck this sucker down and let you know. We got 10 people in the room. Yes, welcome. All right, let's see if we can hit 20 today. All right, here we go. Oh, man, it's really good. It's got like a nutty flavor to it. It's got a uh, really multi kind of, wow, I love the, 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 the little bit of alcohol that you taste after the backwash. Like you sip it down and it rolls through your mouth and you get it down to your stomach. But then there's a little hint of maybe a little bit of whiskey going on in there. I really like it. Actually, it's really quite comparable to Drunatic's Anthony Berg chocolates that she sent me. Check it out. I'm making my way back to you, babe. I can't eat them all, right? So I, I slowly pick at them, right? Maybe one, two, or three here at night. But um, that's what it tastes like. It tastes like a little bit of uh, chocolate mixed in there with a little bit of alcohol, and I'm really enjoying it. All right, guys, here in the United States, it is Black History Month. I told you I was going to introduce you to some, to some lesser-known black historian, historic people. And today is going to be a really good one because I've known about these people for a long time. And, uh, well, ah, shoot, shit. I dropped something. Sorry. I've known about this uh, this group <laughs> for a long time, and I wanted to bring it to light um, because this is this is one of the movies that I really want to play in. All right, this is this is a part a role that I see myself. You know, movies to me are always about stories. And um, I think this is a really cool historical story to tell that a lot of people don't know about. And let me tell you about it because it is February is Black History Month. And I want to bring this to your attention. Maybe you find some interest in it. And it is um, a group of people from 1896 to in 1897. And I'm talking about the 25th Infantry Bicycle Corps. Okay. Now this was a group of 20 African American soldiers that were... Um, they were brought to light by this guy, this uh, Lieutenant James Moss, who, who brought this group. And he wanted to be experimental with, uh, like, riding bicycles in a regiment for war, right? So what they did is they went ahead and they got this, this group together. And they, they started off in uh, Montana. And they rode all the way from uh, Billings, Montana to Yellowstone on a practice run. Then their big haul, and it was in 1897, they went from uh, uh, Missoula, Montana, all the way to St. Louis, Missouri, just to see what it would be like if we had to go to war, and instead of using horses, and, and um, you know, uh, I'm not even sure if the cars were, they, they weren't invented, but buggies and things like that, that's what I mean, cars and stuff, weren't available, what it would be like to have a group of troops on bicycles. So this African-American group, the 25th Infantry Bicycle Corps, was the very first people to do it. So let me go ahead and read this to you, this little blur, real quick, and then you can maybe find out more on your own or if it interests you. This isn't this day in history. I just thought I would bring this to light during this month. The 25th Infantry Bicycle Corps was a unit of black soldiers commanded by a white officer, Lieutenant James A. Moss. Hi, I'd like to play that role. Which was formed in 1896 to test the combat viability of bicycle-mounted troops by riding from Missoula, Montana to St. Louis, Missouri. Moss, a West Point graduate and avid cyclist who held his black enlisted men in high regard, wrote Major General Nelson Miles about his interest in the use of bicycle wear welfare, <laughs> warfare. So pretty cool, neat, interesting to learn about. Um, they faced a lot of hardship along the way. Just getting over the mountains, the Rocky Mountains um, to Nebraska was uh, treacherous. You know, snow, uh, cold, uh, the, riding a bicycle, and that took months. And then by that time, then they were down in like Missouri area, Nebraska, and that internal uh, and the excessive heat was a problem. And they were getting some kind of water disease. Remember, this was. You know, over a hundred years ago, and uh, you know they had uh, not so good water uh, treatment and that kind of thing, and so people were drinking water and they were getting sick. They found alkaline in their water. It's a really interesting story. And then when they got down into the south, 
a lot of people didn't want to help them because they were members of the Union Army, so they didn't want uh, black soldiers camping on their farms and things of this nature. Eventually, um, it was uh, they made it to Nebraska, they made it uh, to St. Louis, they made it to St. Louis, and then they were greeted with a warm welcome. But the person in charge in the army did not allow this a troop of soldiers to continue. They wanted to continue back up, back up to Minnesota. They weren't allowed to. They were kind of uh, just disbanded, and some of the soldiers were then sent off to war. And um, I believe it was the Spanish War or something like that. But anyway, yeah, yeah, boom for sure. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Yes, I thought I would, uh, you know, brief you guys a little bit on that. Welcome to the show, Vishal. Um, really fun, interesting, fun fact about uh, Black History Month. And I wanted to bring the 25th Intra Infantry Bicycle Corps to our attention. My dear uncle is from Montana, the one that is not. Oh, that's awesome. Montana's really cool. Really cool. I tried to get into the University of Montana a couple of years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so anyway, moving right along. What else can we go to? Let's go to the next thing. Sabres are back on the ice tomorrow. They took a two-week uh, vacation. <laughs> no, not vacation. They're not celebrating at all. The Sabres were hit with the COVID uh, bug, and they were not allowed to play for two weeks. So tomorrow they're playing the New York Islanders. Really excited to see my hockey team back in action. They've gone on like a short uh, staff of nine players, but um, but we'll see what happens. Obviously, um, they have to be safe, and they have to go into COVID protocol, which what what happened to them. But now they're able to play, and they'll be playing tomorrow night at 4 o'clock, so I'm really excited about it. Hey guys, if you're just hopping on, this is what we're drinking. I'm definitely feeling the strength of this sucker. This is the Lost Abbey Serpent's Stout. Okay, it's a dark, creamy, chocolatey, mocha -y, filmy, delicious beer. And, um, well, I gotta be honest with you, I'm already slurring. We're only a half an hour into the show, and I'm slurring. I'm excited that you guys are here. Thank you so much. Be sure to go ahead and hit that like button. We got Vishal in the house. Welcome, Vishal. So good to see you. Oh. Yeah, I mean, when I first took a look at that bottle in the store, I was like, eh, should I do it? You know, that it's, it's a big bottle. It's 11%. Um, it's a stout. Not sure how I feel about it, but I, I gathered up my strength and my courage. I reached over, grabbed it from the thing, pulled it into the basket, and went ahead and paid for it. And here we are. And I'm absolutely enjoying it. I'm definitely going to go back to it. I may bring my buddy Nate one in a few months. I think you'll enjoy it. And, um, well, guys, I just want to say thanks for joining me this week. Moving right along, it's time for the show and tell. Barrow's in the house. Welcome, Barrow. All right. Welcome to the show. All right. So the show and tell is going to be fun. If, you, if you've never seen one of these before, most Americans know what they are. Most Americans have one. Um, if you've never seen this thing before, it's pretty interesting. I absolutely love it, especially for the lifestyle I live. I live a very low-key lifestyle where... Um, you know, I, I, I don't have a lot of riches. I'm not rags, but um, but I'm definitely, hey, how are you doing? Um, aqua nuts. But, but this thing I'm about to show you is amazing for the way that I like to eat. Because I like to eat very plain and simple. As much as you like to see the Food Friday videos of me eating hot dogs and, and all kinds of crazy tacos and crazy fast food. To be honest with you, my everyday life is very simple. I like a protein. I like some type of meat. Uh, fish, uh, chicken, or a beef. I like some type of carbohydrate, rice, potato, and then I like some type of vegetable. And this thing I'm about to show you, you can easily do it and make it and cook it within 10 minutes. And it's awesome. I've heard about them for years. You can see them all over YouTube. They have amazing recipes. Dad, if you're still here, you should definitely think about trying this. I think it will speed up the process on a lot of things. And guys, Danny is a great cook. Thank you, Vishal. <laughs> Actually, I'm not I'm not a great cook, but I but I thank you. I'm I'm good at sandwiches and a few other little things. Um, Nate is a great cook. Vishal, 
You're going to freaking love this Vishal. Vishal is a very mild-mannered, good friend, best friend of mine all my life. You know, well, not all my life, but I mentioned college, so <laughs> it seems like all my life. And um, the only time I've ever seen him get mad was when I pressed on the, the pressure, the, the steam pressure, when he was cooking Afghanistan lamb. Now, Vishal... You may or may not have this. But guys, welcome to Show and Tell today. I'm talking about the Instapot. Check this baby out. Six quarts of beautiful love. <laughs> if you don't know what this thing is, I know it looks like a rice cooker, but check it out. It's really great. You can pop this sucker open, put whatever you want in there, right? Six quarts. Okay, just cooked a bunch of Shrevetta's chicken. Okay, so it still smells really good. You lock it in place. It makes a little jingle, and then you put a uh, pressure. You know, aside from cooking anything, I don't know, uh, really extensive. <laughs> we use it every day. It's amazing, isn't it? But I'm telling you, you can literally cook raw lamb, beef, chicken. I mean, you could cook that sucker by itself in 11 minutes. Like, and it comes out perfect beautiful like i'm still learning about the sweet spots of recipes and things like that and like it's um uh, yes yeah, it's, it's amazing I, I i i'm still learning a lot about how to make stuff like what's really what this thing what people really like is to make is soups right because they put the chicken in there they put the stock in there they put the carrots onions whatever you want to put in there and then you just do 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 and it pressurizes and the cool thing about it is yeah, it's just that. you. This thing pops up right here. You let the, the pressurize out here. It shoots a bunch of steam out of this thing. And um, and voila, just like that, it's done. Um, what I like to do is usually cook about uh, three to four pounds of chicken in about eight minutes. I pair that with a bowl of rice, a scoop of rice. I meal prep for the week and I'm done. You know, really great. If you haven't checked this out, check out Instapot. Um, now, they're expensive in terms of, hey, Martin, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Now, this six quart one on Amazon or wherever you're going to buy it in the store is usually priced out at about $59. But um, I was able to go to this place called Bullfrog Liquidators, which liquidates stores. It's a giant warehouse in Valencia, California. And you can go there and you can buy stuff like this. I mean, you can buy anything, really. They just liquidate like old Walmarts, old Home Depots. And they, they put the stuff in their store at a reduced price. And this reduced price, I got this one for 25 bucks, man. Brand spanking new. 25 bucks. The sixth quarter. And um, I, yeah, Uncle John, I know you cook. Dad, I know you cook a ton. You guys use the Instapot? Are you familiar with it? Um, it? All the rave happened a few years ago. Nate, have you ever cooked with the Instapot? It's really great. Um, I feel like this is really nice for like Sichuan hot pot. Um, really, there's just about anything that you can cook with it. Um, I know. It's just 25 bucks, right? And, you know, like I said, I'm living in a more condensed area right now. So for me, it's all about maximizing that. Cheap man, Dan. <laughs> Thanks, Junatech. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, it's, um, you know, maybe I should go on a bargain shopping and all that kind of stuff. Well, Calvin, so you, you're, you live in the United States, you live in Minnesota. Yeah, 25 bucks. This place called Bullfrog Liquidators. There's a bunch of them here in California. I think maybe three or four different stores. There's these giant, <laughs> these giant warehouses. And what they do, like I said, is they buy out places. And then they put them in there for sale at a reduced price. And for 25 bucks. Happy Valentine's Day, Barrow. Welcome, my man. Thank you so much. Happy Valentine's Day. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was pumped to get this one. Um, I'm going to cook some... I'm going to cook some wild rice later with some beef, and we'll have that for our meals uh, all throughout. Well, I usually do my meal prep on Sunday to Wednesday, and then Wednesday to Sunday. So, you know, food doesn't get too bad. But, yeah, check it out. Instapot. If you get a chance to, to, to get one of these ones, it's basically like a pressurized uh, pressurized thing, but um, they've, they've took out all the bells, and they've took out all the raw things of a regular pressurized cooker like Vishal used 
and they've added all the bells and whistles and made it much faster and easier to cook. Absolutely love it. You will too. All right, so guys, this is what we're drinking. We are drinking the Serpent's Stout. And guys, just to show you, I'm, I'm done with this thing. I drank this entire large wine bottle of this stuff. It is thick. It is chocolatey. It is creamy. It is smooth. There's a lot of complexity going on in there. And definitely, at 11%, you're going to feel it. If you're new and you're just hopping on the show, be sure to go ahead and give me a like. Guys, this beer is absolutely delicious. I'm going to go ahead and take a big healthy swig. And then we're going to get into the what would you rather. And today's show is going to be awesome. Man. All right. I really feel like if you drink two bottles of this, okay, two bottles of this, you would be lambasted, right? It's like all night of partying, but only two bottles of beer. Because even one bottle, I feel charged up and ripping and roaring. Definitely feel a little buzzed. But if you drank another secondary bottle, whew, man, you would be ripe. All right, anyway, guys. Stay tuned for next week. Next week, we're going to have a new segment with Nate. Nate is going to be doing Eat It or Not. Let me know if you're interested. Shoot me a DM. What up? <laughs> Travel Man Dandra. Let me know if you're interested. I would like to bring show and tell to you. So, um, Danny, I have to jump off. We'll message you some amazing... Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. Shalu. Shalu. <laughs> All right. Guys, if you're interested in, in being a part of the show, I'm going to go ahead and, and work out the kinks right now, but we will be going ahead and bringing on new people each and every week for the show and tell segment. So if you're interested in doing the show and tell segment, go ahead and DM me. <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> hey, that won't be the first time I had to peel a friend off the floor. All good, Calvin. But, um, but if you're interested in doing the show and tell I'm going to open it up sometime in March, probably the first week of March. So what I'll basically do is you'll go ahead and tell me, Danny, I'm interested in doing the show and tell. Please keep it family friendly. Like, don't do anything weird, sexual, drug related, nothing like that. I'll go over the rules with you later when I perfect it. But I'll send you the link to StreamYard. And then during the show, when it's time for show and tell, you'll click on the link Boom, you'll be piped in, and then we'll be able to get you wherever you are in the world so that you can do show and tell. Because, you know, whatever. I mean, I got some cool shit, but I'd love to see what you guys got. And I'd love to see um, the people that support me from the beginning get first crack at this. So if you're interested, shoot me a DM on my Instagram at Travel Band Dan. Let me know that you're interested. I'll mark it down. And I'll set you up for the show and tell segment is coming in March. So eventually, uh, instead of me talking for an hour and a half, there'll be a bunch of other segments where other people are taking over. So hopefully the show is going to be evolving. And I hope that you are looking forward to that. March is my birthday month. Drone a tick. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you doing a show and tell. Maybe singing you a happy birthday. Anyway. Let's move on with the show. Thank you so much. It's time for What Would You Rather. Get ready for it. It is exciting. It is fun. Please, you can let me know down in the comments right now. But the best thing to do is wait till this episode is over with. And then leave me a comment down below. Why? Because I can go ahead and respond to it and answer back. Two, because the more that you comment on each one of my videos, the more it tells YouTube that, wow, people like this. They're commenting. They're, they're, they're interacting. They're engaging with this, uh, this YouTuber. So let's go ahead and bump him up. So that helps out tremendous. But if you can, please let me know after the show. If you can't, let me know now. Ooh, he, even the burps of Serpent Stout are good. All right, here we go. What would you rather? All right. Would you rather go to Venice, Italy? Okay, canals beautiful walkways, amazing, beautiful architecture, unbelievable history, Venice, Italy. Or would you rather go to the Blue Lagoon in Iceland? 
Okay, now if you don't know what the Blue Lagoon in Iceland is, Google it because it's insane. Like, uh, it's not just blue; it's like aqua blue. It's like aqua, aqua Venice for Drunigan, aqua blue, and it is like. These weird geotherms where the earth is cracked open and they're bubbling warm water. So the pools are actually really warm and they're big. They're not like, and they're not constructed out of concrete. They're like natural, right? So if you like that kind of stuff, that is definitely what you want to see. You have like, not mountains, but like small little hills and then, you know, it's basically small little hills capped with ice. And then you go down and you see these friggin aqua i mean like super aqua blue waters that are warm and you can jump in there and you can relax and um they're soothing they got a whole bunch of salt in them the geotherms are like warming you up it's actually really beautiful too many new restrictions in venice too crowded as well so the blue lagoon for martin okay so that is the conundrum for me because i've actually been to both of them okay I wasn't able to go into the Blue Lagoon because I was filming a TV show and we didn't have the time. But I've been to Venice. I walked up and down. I got lost. I got, you know, absolutely loved it. Um, one of the cool things that a lot of people don't talk about, or maybe they do talk about it with Venice, is the mosaics. Absolutely gorgeous there. Um, yeah, it is too crowded. They're having a problem with the water. But it is Italy, right? It's Venice, Italy. Uh, I've only been in Venice. All right. If you like outdoors and you like nature and you're okay with like jumping into a, 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 a thing of water that is like amongst the mountains, then the Blue Lagoon is the absolute pinnacle of that. It's the best place that you can go where you can jump into warm water, relax, enjoy it, look around, see the beauty of it, and go, holy shit, I can't believe I'm actually in a place like this on earth. Okay, it's really amazing. For me, it's a tough call. I love Italy. I love everything about Italy. Um, but Venice ain't Florence. And for me, I'm going to choose the Blue Lagoon. I'm going with the Blue Lagoon because for me, I, I would love to go into the water and hang out and just be amongst, amongst nature. And uh, just an epic. If you're ever there, it's epic. I, I, that's the only thing I can say to that. All right, moving on to number two. Number two is a food thing. All right, and keeping with the Chinese New Year, Dad, I know you miss real Chinese food. So here we go, guys. Which would you rather, okay? I go with Chuna Tech. All right, would you rather Hong Shao Ro, okay? And Hong Shao Ro is basically this, okay? Take a look at that. Those are cubes of pork. Take a look at that, okay? That is beautiful. Yeah, right here is like the actual pork meat. Then this little chunk right here, this little segment is nothing but pig fat, okay? It's just a giant thing of pig fat, and they put this glaze on it. It's like a sugar honey glaze, and so when you bite into it, it's sweet. But then you go through this, like, weird inch of fat on meat. Then you break into the pork meat, probably what you're most used to, the white pork meat, but... I'm telling you, with a scoop of a little bit of rice, oh my gosh, I absolutely love this flavor. I love Hong Shao Ro. The water in the island is healing. Yes, it is. But you can see that is a beautiful dish right there. Would you rather have Hong Shao Ro, which is uh, basically, I think it's uh, red small pork cubes, right? That's what it's translated into. Or would you rather have the Beijing Kao Ya? Take a look at that, okay? Yeah. <laughs> well, Vishal, I'm gonna address that right now is because I drank an entire bottle. And this isn't like a regular bottle of wine. This is like a huge bottle. And this is an 11 percenter, so I told you at the start of the show I was gonna be Popeye, slurring, and banged up. So hang with me, I'll do my best. But we're having fun. The beer team is here and we're enjoying it. Or would you rather have this? This is the famous Chinese Beijing duck, okay? Sometimes referred to as Peking duck. Take a look at it. Also with that honey glaze, right? And then this part right here is that crispy skin. If you like crispy skin, and I mean like, you know when you bake chicken or you bake like a uh, turkey and you got the crispy skin? 
This is like even more, almost to the point where it's like a little bit of like a thin plastic, okay? But inside is that really dark meat, okay? The duck is a dark meat. So if you like dark meat, if you like the leg of a turkey, this might be what you're really looking for. And um, that's okay, so long, he's not on the <laughs> Thank you, Calvin. I appreciate it, brother. All right, so what are you having, guys? Are you having the Beijing Kaoya, or are you having Okay, you love duck? Okay, yeah, duck is amazing. Or are you having the uh, Hong Shao Ro? Martin likes the duck. Okay, nobody's, anybody want, anybody want the pork? Anybody want the duck? Now, both are amazing dishes. Both are very traditional around the Chinese New Year. But for me, one of my favorite dishes, if not top, is my number three on the top three dishes of Chinese food. Let's go. I'm going with the pork. Frank knows what's up. I'm going with the Hang Shao Ro. Amazing. Guys, I'm telling you, there's nothing better than when you get this on. Most people want the duck. They're a little afraid of that inch of, of fat. But I'm telling you, it's so rich in flavor, okay? It's so, sorry, Nani, <laughs> Calvin, that's none of it, okay? I absolutely love Hong Shao Ro. And um, I think it is my, probably my number thir three favorite Chinese dish of all time. Dad, what would you rather? I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear from you because I know you've tried Beijing Kaoya and um, Mao's favorite. Yeah, I know he liked that, right? Um, but, but, but absolutely delicious and... Um, yeah, that's what I'm going with. All right, moving on to number three. Number three, I'm going to bring you guys a lot of fun, a lot of Disney. Okay, which would you rather watch? Okay, which would you rather watch? We know we always, uh, always bring in a movie. Are you a more of a fan of... Oh, I don't know what he says. But The Lion King. Okay, are you a fan of The Lion King? The great Lion King from Disney? Or do you prefer... The movie Aladdin, the original Aladdin movie with um, with all the original cast. You know who I'm talking about. Which would you prefer? For me, that's a no-brainer, but a lot of people love The Lion King. I love The Lion King. Both movies are great, but when it comes down to it, you can't beat Robin Williams as the genie. <laughs> I mean, straight up, like, he was the best maybe ever pairing casting ever. It was just an amazing uh, uh, display of voiceover of cartoons. Um, no, not Will Smith. <laughs> not Blue Will Smith. I'm talking about old, I guess it was in the 90s. Which would you prefer? Was it Aladdin or Lion King? For me, all the way, Aladdin. Guys, I cannot stress how much I love that movie. Every once in a while, I'll pop it on. I don't watch it as much because I just... Lion King, Drunatic. I just don't want to burn myself out of it, but I absolutely love it. It's a it's a great story. Um, yeah, so for me, it's Aladdin. All right, moving on to number four. Number four, which do you prefer? What do you do? Do you take Uber or do you take Lyft? Okay, both are pretty much the same. I'm just curious, your opinion, what do you take? What do you like, Uber or Lyft? I have both of them here on my phone, so uh, I don't know what constitutes whether or not calling Lyft or Uber first. I haven't had a chance to use it much in the last year, so I think that if I had to choose, um, always Lyft. Okay, interesting, Frank. Okay, why is that? I'm curious to know why people choose Lyft over Uber. For me, recently nothing. I take the bus, yeah, we need a dog sled. <laughs> Calvin, I love it. I love the participation. That's great. Um, for me, I use Uber. Okay, Barrow uses Uber in India. That's amazing, okay? So all over the world, it is being used. For me personally, I like Uber. I don't know why. Uber is for some reason banned in Norway. Holy shit. I didn't know that. That's very interesting. Thank you for sharing that, Jens. I didn't know that. For some reason, Uber is banned in Norway. Hmm, who knows? All right, well, I always take Uber. I don't know. It's just easier for me. I use it more. I think it's. I've been conditioned to it because I've been. I started on Uber, but whatever. I was just curious to see where you guys stand. All right, going with number five. Number five is another wacky one. We gotta go wacky, and that is, what would you rather, guys? Would you rather? Okay, you have to. 
the five year wear, okay? You have to have these things for five years, okay? Since it's number five, it's wacky, it's wild, you're part of the beer team, let's do it, all right? So, you have to do it for five years, all right? You have a, a pair right here on your abs, okay? Right here, you have cow's udders. I mean, I'm talking about six of them, right? You have six little udders going right here. <laughs> well, they would be more like this. All right? You have cow udders, okay? Which would you rather? Wear the cow udders. They're part of your body, right? Remember we talked about the boys? You remember the deep, how he had the gills? Literally, your 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 abs are now udders, okay? Cow udders, big suckers like my thumb, okay? Or would you prefer... Would you rather a giant one, a human-sized one, you know, uh, uh, proportional to your body, so whatever the, the body of the animal was to its thing, then whatever how tall you are, you would have the same. Or you have <laughs> a tail, a squirrel's tail. Which would you rather? A, a bunch of otters <laughs> or a squirrel's tail? Okay, and yeah... <laughs> Crazy. Now, now let me tell you something. There's no way to hide this shit. Okay? So, no matter where you go, the tail is sticking out or the udders are out. So, just like a cow, just like a squirrel, you have to walk around with udders. Now, for me, I don't know what I... <laughs> I think a tail. Everyone's going to the tail. Yeah, something about an udder, man. You know, when you see an udder up close, you're just like, damn. That is gross, man. It's the <laughs> Frank, the otters are out. Yes, I'm going with the squirrel's tail, too. You know, maybe it makes me cute. I'll grow my hair long. Maybe I'll grow a beard. I got a tail. We're rocking. Only five years. But with the otters, you literally got long nipples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You get arrested. You literally got long nipples, like hanging off your stomach, right? So, <laughs> Dan, put the beer in my... Uncle John, we haven't even got to the second one. It's going to be awesome. What are you going with, Uncle John? You going with the udders and the squirrel tail? For me, I'm going with the squirrel tail. Why not? What the hell? Like I said, grow my hair out, grow a beard. You'll fit in. You'll be like the bushy man with a tail from Buffalo. All right? Screw it. Guys... We're not putting the beard on. We're picking it up. We're going to go ahead and score this Lost Abbey Serpent Stout. By the way, when are you going to grow your beard? Uh, well, it's coming up soon. Coming up soon. Very soon. People like the beard, you know? <laughs> All right, here's what we're drinking. Sorry, Officer Dan had to keep my udders. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, I like a little milk. You look like a lobster man, Dan. <laughs> I know. He's so funny, man. I, I was like, all right, hell with it, dude. I'm busting out the turtleneck. I'm busting it out every year. I'm going to be wearing a different color turtleneck on Christmas. I love the turtleneck, but, um, you know, it, it, it takes a little getting used to. But due to the 11 percenter and, like Uncle John said, I'm definitely feeling the power. So my face is red. My eye's not Popeye'd yet, but it's getting there. But let me go ahead and swig this down, and I'm going to go ahead and score it for today. Wow. Beautiful beer, really. I mean, the only thing that I could say that I would have liked better about this beer, that it was, wasn't so much. Like, it was, um, it was a big bottle, right? Like, I, I would like a smaller bottle. And, you know, we got to review it. And one thing that I made on this show that was a prerequisite, that is if I buy a beer, no matter the size, no matter how big the bottle or can is, you got to drink the thing. All right, so, well, well, we got punched. So, let me go ahead. I'm bringing out the scorecard. Uncle John, I don't know if you're new to this or bigger glasses, but this is the new scorecard, guys. We're going to go ahead... I'm going to wait until I can do it properly the way that I wanted to. But until then, we're doing it on the pad. My sister's ex always wore that turtleneck instead of ties. Well, that that's a ballsy call. That's a ballsy call because I like ties, but I don't know if they'll replace um, 
Uh, I don't know if a turtleneck replaces a tie. Anyway, here we are. Guys, I'm going to go right into it. Let's go with the taste, okay? It's got a beautiful taste, right? Really nice. Smooth, chocolatey, a little hint of alcohol. Really strong, malty taste. Like soft, caramely taste. Really enjoy drinking this stout. I know it's definitely made me buzzed. I know it made me fun. But, um, hey, that's this is the beer show, and you're the beer team. But I, I, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to say that this, this Serpent Stout, of all the stouts, is going to be a 4.0, okay? A 4.0, okay? The highest you can get is a 5.0. But what a delicious taste. I really enjoyed drinking it. Each and every sip was good. I wasn't... Taking it back a little bit with a Keystone Bitter Beer Face. It was just really smooth all the way through, and I absolutely enjoyed it. Now the price. Okay. What would you pay for a bottle like this? Now this is where things get a little tricky. What would you pay for a bottle like this? You'd think this bottle is going to be $4.99, right? It wasn't. With tax and deposit here in the state of California, this bottle was $12. Okay, Jen's very close. 12 bucks. So expensive, right? I mean, it's probably two beers, but still very expensive. All right, that looks like a, nah, not that high. 12 bucks. Still, how many people can spend 12 bucks on a bottle of beer, right? Like, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're still building this channel. We're not there yet, right? Um, I like extravagant things. I'm just not there yet. We're building it, right? But I wanted to do it for the show. So, being at $12 a bottle, now you get a lot of it. The price point is good. But if I was to split that in half per bottle, would I pay 6 bucks for a bottle of beer? Probably not. Unfortunately, it is a big bottle. Unfortunately... I wouldn't pay $6 for a 12-ounce bottle, okay? So if you split this in half at 6 bucks, I wouldn't do it. So I'm going to give it a lower score, a sobering score of a 2.5, which is definitely going to hurt the overall total. But it's expensive shit, right? And we like to drink and have fun, all good stuff. I mean, it is good. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll take that into consideration later. Okay, design. Look, dude. All right, it's Valentine's Day, okay? Yeah, that's true, Jens. We're gonna go into the T. We'll go into the TMD factory. It's Valentine's Day. Adam and Eve, they're butt naked, running around. They got these little tree and serpent covering their private parts. Design's cool. I like that. It's just a simple label. It gives you what you need. It tells you what it is. Um, it, it's got this 11% uh, on it. Um, this is cool, right? It came with the cork. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. It came with this cool cork and then this little wire thing that I had to twist. And once you twist it, it's like a bar stool, right? So, yeah, I think the design is great on this one. The, to be honest with you, the design is what hooked me. The design was, was, like, was like, hey, Danny, grab this beer and do it on your show. It wasn't the price. It wasn't the stout. It was the design. So, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead, and because it's got the cork and the wire, I'm going to also give it a 4.0. A great design score. Accessibility. You ain't getting this beer anywhere but in these craft areas of America. So, the accessibility is not very good. It's a hard beer to find. It's a hard beer to get. Um, if you happen to get it, Congratulations. There's not a lot of mass production of it. You know, but maybe that's their appeal. So we're going off of the appeal of how accessible it is to the world. Because this is a global show. So I'm going to go ahead and unfortunately give it a modest score of a 3.0. Right? You're going to see student. Be a C person. Right? Let's just look at the beer like it is. But the travel man Dan factor. Oh man. When I saw this beer, I literally was like, that's it? I went into the beer store looking for a beer that would go ahead and represent Valentine's Day on this particular show. 
And I said, you know what? It'd be cool if they had some love and some heart. How better not to represent the love and support about the two original people to bang it out and create humans, right? Adam and Eve. <laughs> That's what I liked about it. I think it's great. I think they had this really cool system of the cork and wire. And I literally looked at this beer and was like, oh man, it's like $10.99 on the price tag. I have to tax deposit, 12 bucks. I walked away. I went looking for another beer. I came back to it, peeked at it, went back to it again and said, you know what? I got to do it. I got to do it. Thank you, Barra. Barra, I got to do it. So I grabbed it and the TMD factor really kind of just mm, said, you know what, Danny? Try some of these other weird beers. Try some of these other little guys. Some of these beers that aren't accessible to the world like the rest of us. Okay, try some of these beers and introduce their cork. You fell in <laughs> I fell in love. Frank, I fell in love with that beer. What can I say? So I didn't care if it cost $20. I was buying it. I wanted to drink it. And for that, I'm going to give it a good score of a 4.5 on the TMD factor. Yes. Okay. So let me go ahead and add these up. I need to, uh, well, quiet myself before I add these up. So let's go ahead. 8, 10.5. Okay, so right on the, the, the course of respectability, ladies and gentlemen, we have a total score of 18. That's right, 18. Not a bad score at all. I'd say the thing that hurt the most was the price. And, you know, well, it is expensive, but you got to kind of, you know, weigh your options. But the price for this one brought it down a little bit, but 18 was the score I definitely recommend if you get a chance to check out the lost abbey as you can see i'm bang i gotta jam out for two minutes give me two minutes i have to go and do something real quick i'm fumbling all over the place hey guys this is as real as it gets so i'm thankful for that opportunity to go ahead and bring you guys who i am as a person here live on this beer team me. We're going to get into the second video and the second beer and close out the show in the next 20 minutes. Give me five minutes. I'll be right. Give me two minutes. I'll be right back. No, I don't care. I can't leave now. Give me 45 minutes. I'll be there. I'm in the middle of a live show. This is the weekly beer and video review show with Travel Man Dan. I don't got time for that. Delicious. All right. Give me 45 minutes. I'll hit you up. Thank you. All right, guys. We are back. Thank you so much. Did we lose any? No, we actually gained somebody. Maybe I should leave and we'll gain more people. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Now, let's get into the next video and then the next beer. The next video for this week is going to be a lot of fun. Who do we got? Sam is here. I, I missed you, Sam. Welcome to the show. We just finished it. Don't, don't tell me that's my boy, Sam, from San Gabriel Valley. Oh, man, I would love it. He's got the bubble kush going. All right. So, guys, I want to talk to you guys about next week's video. You know, it's, it's tough because my channel is Travel Man Dan and I can't travel. I mean, you can travel, but I want to do it proper. I want to do it safe. I want to do it. Hey, yes, Sam, welcome to the show, my man. Welcome, Sam. I'm so excited that you're here. Sam has graciously offered to give me the next couple well, I don't know if we're going to do next week or the following week. A fun beer that uh, he has suggested. It's like a grapefruit, cushy beer. And uh, Sam, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I haven't seen you since I've been back. Brother, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for hopping on. Let me talk a little bit about, um, about the next beer that we're going to be doing. The next video. Now, the next video is one of the videos that I really wanted to put out for 
probably the last two years, but I wanted to build it up a little bit. Now, because I can't travel like I want to. Now, if you come here for travel, thank you, bro. If you come here for travel, don't worry. This is a, this is, I'm going to be continuing traveling for a long time. So we're going to be doing a lot of travel. I'm going to take you all over the world. But right now during COVID, it's best to stay safe, stay home, focus on what I need to do and bring you other content. So if you come to my channel and it's all over the place, it is what it is. Brother, I hope that you guys are like really into what I bring to the table and then we'll continue to travel. So. <laughs> yes, Baro, I could start. I could restart Michael Monday. You the man. You the man, Baro. So listen. The, the the next video is really important to me. I'm gonna put out a heartfelt movie man Dan episode, and um, you know it's about auditions. And I've been on probably, I don't know if I had a guess, seven hundred to one thousand somewhere in there. Nah, I mean probably. Probably like 500 to 700 auditions. You know, auditions for acting roles. Shit that I see on TV. Movies, television, commercials that I see. On Go ahead and bring to this channel. Is the, 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 the real life of me. Movie Man Dan. Yes, the real life. So I'm going to bring you guys a fun little montage compilation uh, with an intro from me about acting and auditioning. Now, I have about 20 auditions that I want to show you that I failed at. So, if you're interested in checking it out, now, self-taping is really big in Hollywood. You know, they'll send you the audition, you self-tape it, you got a background, whatever. I've done them on vacation, I've done them in weird spots, I've done them in my regular spots, I've gone and paid for spots to go ahead and just audition. And um, you're going to see that, um, you know, you just send in your self-tape. If they like you, they call you back. So they might invite you a hundred self tapes. Then they go ahead and they call you back and maybe you're one of 15 and then you're in the room. But I just wanted to go ahead and showcase that like me as an actor, me as movie man, Dan, why I started travel man, Dan was because of, of my um, acting experience and what I do was to go ahead and showcase also part of the acting world. So next week's video will be a video called uh, movie man, Dan 20 auditions that I failed at 20 auditions that i did i prepared for and i didn't get holy crap wow so stay tuned for that one now let's get into the second beer the second beer today sticking with the theme of today and that is celebrating the celebrations ladies and gentlemen i've drank a hundred million of these beers <laughs> i know where are they today i don't know where tenacious freak and aquanuts are maybe they're busy Good. Thank you, Frank. That's what it's all about, right? You know, that's uh, that's really um, that's the support I'm looking for. Just go for it, right? And we'll get into that in a minute. But I'm bringing out this, and uh, this is what we're doing. Sticking with the Chinese, the Chinese New Year, guys. We are doing Qingdao. <laughs> yes, it is smaller. Okay, it is Qingdao. Okay, it is a premium lager. It is not so strong okay it is 4.5 percent is the beer of china now i'm going to explain something to you guys and uh maybe you uh, is there alcohol now i know seriously frank you've been in china you know qingdao so it's spelled t-s-i-n-g-t-a-l so the qingdao where it comes from cheers yes see jen's knows what's up it's actually q i N G D A O. Okay, and that is the provenance of Qingdao. Okay, why they spell it like this, I'll never really know. Um, I guess you can go into the inner researches. Um, it's not bad, it's a premium lager. Let's go ahead. I've drank a bunch of these things. Okay, now me and my father got into a discussion today about the green bottle, brown bile. Yes, bigger bottles in China. Yes, the bigger bottles are definitely what I like to drink. And this is the 22 bottle. But um, my father had introduced me to the brown bottle. And I believe, you know, he said the green bottle was draft. So, Dad, this is the lager. I believe the brown bottle was the draft. 
Now, one is better than the other, and I definitely prefer the brown bottle more, but I haven't really seen it that much. My first experience to China was in Guangzhou and Foshan, and I've never seen a brown bottle. I've only seen the bottle in Shanghai and in North. I've never seen the brown bottle below in the middle parts of China. But this is the Qingdao that is mostly imported in the United States. And let's go ahead and, um, you know what? We haven't done it in a while. We, we go ahead and pour it all, usually in the glass. Let's go ahead and take a sip straight from the bottle, old school travel man Dan. Yeah, exactly. I thought draft was from a bottle or from a tap as well. Light, light and easy, really sweet. Okay, not too much complexity going on there. You know what you're getting. You're getting more of a cereal beer. You can really taste it and um, the grainy flavor. Let me go ahead and pour this into the glass as I cleaned out this glass, and you can see. This beer is definitely well carbonated, okay? This is your traditional lager beer, all right? Not too bright, not too thick, okay? Perfect beer. Then you go to Qingdao for the beer. No, I did not. It's funny that you mentioned that um, because my next trip to China, I'm going to try to get to that Qingdao festival. And that's what I want to base it on. When is the Qingdao Festival? Um, I, I, would, I would literally love to go back to China for six months. I don't know if I could do that with my job. Unfortunately, um, if I had to go back, I would, I'm going to try to do it around the Qingdao Beer Festival. Were you there, Frank? I heard you could buy big bags of beer for like 15 RMB, which is equivalent to like two bucks. And uh, I believe it's like a liter and a half. So... A little bit more than this thing for two bucks sign me up I hope to do it my great friend my Chinese uh, best um, best Chinese friend Mercury uh, she's from Qingdao never went want to see that yeah, well maybe we could do the beer team over there <laughs> you know as this channel continues to grow who the hell knows let's see what happens but now it's time for one of my favorites one of Barrow's favorites it's time for this day in history. So guys, I, now I want to tell you, I'm not a history professional. I'm not a history teacher. I'm not a history buff. I just, I just like it. I like bringing it up on this segment, okay? So if you know of anybody, if you know of anybody that's interested in it, I'm looking for a real history professional. Somebody that really wants to be on this show each and every week that wants to go ahead and bring us this day in history. If you know, please go ahead and DM me. I'd love to have him on the show. I'd love to bring him in each and every week or her. Um, just somebody that is a little more versed in history. Because I pull stuff up, I do some research, and it's definitely accurate. But I want to bring like a real history professor. All right, but here we go. So on this day in history, on February 14th, 1803, Apple Pear Patent it by Moses Coates in Downing, Pennsylvania. That's right. So you had this guy, Moses Coates, right? And he patented the apple pear. Now what the apple pear did was it sped up the process to go ahead and make apple byproducts like pies and cakes and things like that and sliced apples. And um, well, basically what it was was this weird invention that you, you hook the thing up that you hook the apple up to this two prong system like this, right? And then you, you went ahead and you revved it up and it went ahead and cut through the core of the apple and disposed of the core of the apple. And therefore the apple was able to be cut and sliced and able to be made into pies, cakes, uh, condensed things. I don't know what they did back then, but that was 1803. Moses Coates patented it the first apple pear. Now, what that significance means to this day, I don't know because I eat the pear myself. I mean, I eat the whole core of an apple myself. I think it's fine. Spit the seeds out and you're good. Anyway, on this day in history, in 1929, the St. Valentine's Massacre in Chicago, seven gangsters were killed, okay? It was allegedly all on Al Capone's orders. 
Man, if you like gangster stuff, if you like gangster movies, if you like gangster history, this is your day. Because on this day in history, in 1929, um, you know, Al Capone was supposedly supposed to give this order to Bugsy. And Bugsy mowed him down, down in this weird St. Valentine's Massacre whole history thing. So, check it out. You know, oh. <laughs> uh, well... Borrow, this is this day in history. I'm trying to bring you what happened. This day wasn't exactly the most exceptional day. But hopefully you're not yawning too much. But guys, that's what happened on this day in history in 1929. I think you know, I would love to play Bugsy. I would love to play. Listen, there's a lot of speculation about what my big thing was. I got two really good ones in me. I don't know when they're going to happen. I don't know why they're going to happen. But... I definitely think they're probably going to be um, something to do with a uh, gangster. You know, I think one of those things will be a gangster thing. So, I hope so. Frank, I hope so. Anyway, moving on to number three. On this day in history, in 1931, the original Dracula film starring Bela Lugosi was released all across the United States. Now, two days earlier, on February 12th, it was screened in New York City. But on this day in history, <laughs> thank you, Calvin. All right, my crew, the beer crew, support and travel man, Dan. I fucking love it. Okay, on this day in history, in 1931, the original Dracula. You guys know, if you follow me, that I'm a huge monster movie fan. And Bela Lugosi was the guy. And on this day in history, all across the United States, the original Dracula was released. On this day in history, in 1942, Rotterdam, a city in the Netherlands, opens its mass tunnel. Okay? And if you don't know about this, maybe you don't know about it. Maybe you have no idea about it. The mass tunnel is really interesting because it goes down below the river. Okay? They have this huge river that cuts through what was the Gary Oldman or Christopher Lee? Ah. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. All right, so going back to what I was talking about, the Moss Tunnel. In Rotterdam, there's this giant river that cuts through the city. Then there's a little walkway that you can go down, and you can go under the river and get to the other side of the city, either by car, bicycle, or walk. And what's interesting about it is the bicycle route that you take is like, Subway thing, escalator down, and then you're on the second floor and you, and you you can ride your bicycle through. But the pedestrians that actually are walking, they have no bicycle, are down one floor below the uh, bicycles so they can walk across. I think that's really cool. I think it's really interesting to be able to walk underneath the river. Um, I think being brought up in Buffalo underneath, uh, next to the Niagara River, how interesting it would be rather than have a bridge that goes over the river, if you can go underneath it through subway or through a uh, bicycle, it will be really kind of neat. Um, I know that in the Netherlands, they love their bicycles, so it probably makes it more accommodating. Guys, if you're just hopping on, this is what we're drinking, the Qingdao. Xin Nian Kuai Le. Happy Chinese New Year. What a distinct difference in flavor. You know, the malty flavor on this one is not so strong as the last Imperial Stout, but really good beer. Definitely enjoying it. And under the spirit of things, as I wear red, as it's Chinese New Year, and I've drank down uh, over a hundred of these beers, I'm having a great time. And it's still not the best beer, but still really good. Moving on with this day in history. On this day in history, in 1986, Dwight Gooden signed to a one-year deal of $1.3 million contract, making the 21-year-old the youngest millionaire in Major League history. And guys, I can't stress that enough. What an unbelievable feat. Can you believe Dwight Gooden signed a contract in 1986 for $1.3 million? Now they're like $132 million. It's like way crazy, um, but for one year... Coming off that unbelievable Cy Young year, and then he was able to win the World Series with the Mets in 1986. Um, unfortunately, Dwight Gooden had a little bit of trouble with the nose candy, and, uh, you know, 
plummeted out towards the late end of his career, but in the beginning of his career, definitely 84 through 86, he was the pinnacle. He was an unbelievable pitcher. And we always have to throw in a baseball for this day in history. All right, in this day in history, to close it out, on, two, on 20, 20, okay, sorry, 2019, J.P. Morgan was the first bank to create its own cryptocurrency, the JPM coin. Okay, I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Not sure if you like cryptocurrency. You a little drunk, sir. Yes, I definitely am. <laughs> yes. So, guys, forgive me. I definitely went a bit off a little more than I can chew with this one. So, we're slurring. We're having a little fun. Hey, it happens a little bit. But I'm not going back onto it. On this day in history, that's what happened. Thank you so much. We're drinking Qingdao for the second beer. It's really good. It's light. It's easy. Hey, Lisa, my sister. <laughs> yes. The ain't water show. This ain't water show. Frank, I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know what? You get drunk. My sister Lisa is here. Cheers, Lisa. But I got to say, I love that you guys come to my defense. And you know what? We only have 10 people. Who knows what will happen? This thing's going to get bigger. It's going to grow. It's like a, like a stock, right? It's, we're right here. We peaked a little bit. We built the candle down, down. Uh, you know what I mean? You never know when that growth is going to happen. And um, the authenticity of who I am, I'm not going to change. Yeah, I knew going on, whatever, YouTube would be a risk. Drinking the Lost Abbey, getting smashed. But you know what? I still wanted to carry on the show. So thank you so much that can go ahead and support me each and every time, whether I'm half drunk, full drunk, or so much similar. But uh, yeah, guys, you mean the world to me. Thank you so much. Moving on. You should tell. You should. Yeah, I, you know what? I've been reaching out to them. I've only had success with the local Buffalo ones. Isn't that weird? I find that very strange because I definitely message them. But um, as we continue to grow, I will start to see how I can get better with that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll be invited into the breweries and be sent beer and that kind of thing. But anyway, going on to the next segment. Nice, Frank. Thank you so much. We're going on to what are you reading? What are you watching? Okay, what am I reading? Well, it's Chinese New Year, man. You know what I'm reading. Freaking love China. You know what I mean? I'm reading the Chinese book, Discovery. I, I find so many interesting things. And you know what's really cool about this? Is as I read through this book, this is like your, your basic Discovery uh, Chinese tourism book. As I read things like this, I, can, I, I, I literally will read stuff about places that I've been. And I'm like, oh yeah, they're right. Or, oh yeah, no, it's not really like that. Or, you know, whether I'm uh, indifferent or agreeance, you know, this whole section on Shanghai, I've been to all these places that they talk about. I've done videos here on this channel, all places like Yu Yuan Garden and all points in between. And um, it's really fun for me. I always try to, <laughs> you get inspired. Yeah, I always try to get inspired. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? Like, this is, this, this is a huge part of my life. I absolutely love it. It was a huge part of my life before I went there. And so during Chinese New Year, um, you know, it's something I can't explain unless you've lived in another country. I say China because that's the country I've lived in the longest. But if you've ever lived in another country where you had to set up and you had to go to the banks and you had to go to the grocery stores and you had to go to all the daily life and you've seen the cycle of the holidays... You don't understand what I'm talking about. You'd have this affection. You'd have this feeling for what these people are like and uh, what this country is like. You know, born and raised American. Definitely apple pie, baseball, all that good stuff. You know, 100% that's who I am. But um, I love the world. And um, reading books on China and, and getting first up and, and being able to reminisce is a huge part of my life. So that's what I'm reading. Let me know down in the comments below. Well, you're reading. I love to hear from you. What am I watching? Oh my gosh. Let me comb my hair back. Oh my gosh, I watched this amazing show. 
I know I'm late to the party. You guys have probably seen it. You reviewed it, whatever. Been through it. But watch this. Dad, I know you've been watching a hell of a lot of the TV. You got to watch this show. It's freaking awesome. Okay, only six months and go. Jurnatech, don't worry. If you come back, we'll have fun. It, it, you know, we'll show you around. Six months is a good time. That's a that's that's an ample time to be in the country. But um, I tell you, what I'm watching, you got to check this out. It's on Netflix. It's called The Queen's Gambit. Okay, you may or may not have seen it. It's fucking awesome. Excuse my language, but um, I love to see stuff like this where it takes you through this fictional character who is a young woman who is a chess player. Um, she's an orphan chess player. It's just really well done. The acting is brilliant. One of the things I liked about it, it was a period piece. So it took place in the 60s, in the late 60s. So you get to see all the cool things. It took place in, in Soviet Russia, to so the United States. And um, just guys, if you haven't seen The Queen's Gambit on uh, Netflix, brilliant show. It's uh, seven episodes. I'm not going to tell you much more about it. I absolutely enjoyed it. I look forward to each and every episode more than the boys. So I just came off the boys from Amazon. And, um, you know, I like all that superhero shit. But um, the Queen's Gambit is the real life superhero stuff. And when you see it, you'll, you'll be able to connect to it. You got to check it out. Let me know if you've seen it. Let me know if you watch it. The Queen's Gambit is amazing. All right, guys, this is what we're going to finish up on. I'm going to go ahead and TP boys forever. Yeah, you know, and, all right. <laughs> you know, Lisa, that's um, to your liking. This is what we're doing, the Qingdao beer from China. A Chinese beer. Xin Nian Kuai La Hong Gong Si Fa Choi. Delicious. Really, really delicious. You know, me and my dad were talking about this earlier. Now, Dad, this says premium lager. So I'm assuming that the brown bottle was the draft. But let's go right into the score and taste. Okay? What are you going to get from a taste like this? You're going to get an average lager beer. Something that is smooth. It's refreshing. It's something that you're comfortable with. It tastes a little grassy. It's a little cereal. And, uh, hey, cheers! And um, definitely not a bad taste. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 3.5, which means I really enjoyed it. I'll go back to it. I'll enjoy it each and every time. But I can't give it that upper echelon level of taste, right? It wasn't something that brought a new taste to me. It wasn't something that dropped me off my chair. It was something I'm used to, comfortable with, and always accepting of a fine premium blogger. All right, price. All right, listen, let's, let's be honest. It's a premium lager. It's Chinese import. So, you know, $1.50. $1.50 for a bottle of beer. Boom. Superb price. Love the price. Let's see. So, if I want to drink 20 of them, how much is that? Who can tell me? Quick math. Boom. <laughs> you know, really good stuff. You're probably not going to drink 20 of them. But if you drink six of them, that's an affordable price. It's not like six of these, right? Okay, it's six of these. And as you buy more, the price drops. Because I bought them single, the price was a little bit. So, definitely enjoy the Qingdao. And if you buy in China, it's probably even cheaper. For the price here in the United States, I'm going to say that's a hell of a price. For $1.50, bought and out of the store, bottle of beer. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a score of a 4.5. 4.5. Good score. Almost a perfect score. All right. The design. Now, I don't prefer the green label. To be honest with you, there's something psychologically going on with me that I prefer the brown bottle. Because the green bottle means skunk city. Right? Not the best flavor. But we look at this and, we, and, and it says... I think it's the Germans that started the Qingdao. Qingdao, okay? Now, I have no idea why it's spelled this way. But the correct pronunciation is Qing. Like Q-I-N-G-D-A-O. 
Okay, that's the province it comes from. I don't know why it's spelled like this. I'll have to do a little more research. Okay, the design isn't overwhelming. I like that they have the two lions on there. If you don't know the symbolic of, of the lions, it is, um, well, it's, it's very traditional in Chinese banks, meaning I think you have, ah, okay. All right, so uh, I like that. I like that it's, um, well, there really isn't nothing special about this bottle. I can't tell you anything great about it. It looks like your regular domestic beer, even though it's imported. There's nothing special with the design. And unfortunately, I'm going to go ahead and give that a very even score of a 2.5. 2.5. All right, accessibility. Now, everybody wants to know, where's your best German beer? Where's your best... Canadian beer. Where is your best American beer? Where's your best Chinese beer? Now this beer is pretty accessible. You can get it anywhere in the world pretty much. You know, you just might have to go to a specialty store, right? Yeah, fair score, right? 2.5, 2 not, not a great design. You can get it pretty much anywhere in the world. Now, can you get the brown Qingdao? Can you drink out of the beer, uh, the beer bag like in the Qingdao festival? No, but if you want to try Chinese beer, and you want to be included in the conversation. Oh, I've had Chinese beer. You know that. Do you know that coffee shop dickhead who oh, had Chinese beer? <clears throat> I don't know how else to say that. Beer bomb, extremely rare. But uh, beer bomb is beer bag is extremely rare. But Qingdao, you can pretty much get everywhere. So I'm gonna give it a good score of an accessibility. All throughout Asia, you can get it. Africa. I don't know. Europe, yes, you can probably get it anywhere, right? Pretty much any city of any major, any country, any city in any major country can get it, okay? Uh, United States, you can buy it in any city in the United States. You might have to go out and seek it out a little bit, but you can get it. So therefore, I'm going to give it a score of a 4.0. Not a bad score, all right? Even in Boston, you can get it. Right? Hey, hey, you're in Boston, eh? I can get a Qingdao, huh? You pack the car over the bar and drink some Qingdao. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Frank. I know that's not how you talk, but, you know, that's what everyone's go-to is. Love the Boston accent. Love the Boston people. I only cheer in chocolate. Okay. All right. Junitic. I only cheer in chocolate as well. To my sweetheart. Drunatic, who has graced me with the chocolates. I'll pull it out, the Jim Beam. All right, cheers to you, and then we will go to the TMD factor, and I'll total up and give you the quote of the week. All right, cheers to you, Drunatic. Since it is Valentine's Day, and you sent me a huge box of chocolates, Drunatic, this valentine is for you thank you so much as i nibble on this chocolate this is a jim beam bottle stick i love the canadian <laughs> uh here we go awesome really good all right TMD factor. Now, I'm going to be biased to this. I've drank hundreds of bottles of beer with the locals in China. Love this beer. Love the spirit it brings. It's like, imagine if you were from Brazil and you were hanging out and you were going to... Minnesota, hi, hi. Okay. <laughs> Calvin, give me a week on that and I'll be good. All right, I challenge you guys. No, Ch Calvin challenged me. Okay, Qingdao. I've drank hundreds of it in the native land of China, right? So that TMD factor alone boosts it up. I like this beer. It's like if you were from Brazil and you were in America, you want to go home to Brazil back again after you went to school and say, hey, you know what? I drank a bunch of Budweiser with the country folk. You know, Qingdao to me will always be synonymous with KTVs, 
good times and fun street action that I had at the cow, Shao Kao. Okay, the barbecue, the Chinese barbecue, where you order up like 20 bottles of the big bottle of Qingdao. Um, this bottle really brings back memories. Nothing so great about the taste, although it's good. It's not going to really overwhelm you with something new and familiar with it. But the TMD factor is that I drank hundreds of bottles of this in China. And I had a great time around those bottles. Because that's what it's all about, right? That's what it's all about all the time. How much good time you had around drinking. It's not actually about the drink. You know, some beers I don't even like. But I drink them. I like the people I'm around when I'm drinking them. Guys, I'm telling you. That alone will definitely bring it to a good score. And I'm going to give the Qingdao a score of a 4.0 just because I absolutely love the experiences I had while drinking it. Let me go ahead and total this up. And I'll give you today's total. Close out the show with the quote of the week. And thank you again for watching. All right, here we go. Guys, we have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Holy cow. All right, so coming close to one of the greatest scores ever. And I think that would probably have to do with the consistency and definitely the price. Guys, the, the Qingdao registers today on the weekly beer and video review show with Travel Man Dan at an 18.5. There it is. There is the score. 18.5 for Qingdao. Wow, unbelievable score. It pulled through. Gotta say, it was on experience, accessibility, and price. Really fun stuff. Love drinking this beer. Brings back a lot of memories of the times I had in China. I absolutely will, I will die with. And, um, you know, living in another country, because as an American, you know, we love our country. We're very prideful of it. But going and living in another country, you also take that pride with you. And you, hey, Greg Z's in the house. And you accept it into your heart. And, um, you know, I had a fun experience. And definitely my life, not centered around, but involved a lot of Ching Dao's. So great score. Guys, we had Ching Dao's at 18.5. We had this Serpent Stout at 18. That really set this whole uh, episode off. And now uh, we have 11 people, 11 likes. That's what I like to see. I am definitely starting to slur. I've been drinking a bunch of alcohol that's too strong for one person. Eating chocolates. Now let me leave you with the quote of the week. And the quote of the week is from a famous actor. This one comes from Denzel Washington. We talked a little bit about earlier the 25th Infantry uh, Bicycle Corps. One of my favorite movies of all time was Denzel Washington's big breakout in which was glory but I wanted to go ahead and I wanted to see uh, uh, what you guys think of this quote and how you can represent and implement it into your life okay and it goes like this he said Denzel said goals on the road to achievement cannot be achieved without discipline and consistency okay and that really resonated with me as I go through a bunch of quotes this was something that I pulled from a quote box that I have stored of quotes from years ago. Think about it. He says, goals on the road to achievement. You're on the road to achievement. You're getting better. You're going to get accolades. You're going to get uh, perceived for what you do. And and listen, you. thank you, Frank. Thank you. I'm not talking about me as a creator. I'm not talking about... Thank you, Frank. I'm not talking about me as an actor. I'm talking about you guys, whatever you do in your life. Whether you're in science, whether you're in education, whether you're industrial, whether you're in construction, whatever your life is, okay? This thing of the goals that you're on to so that you can receive achievement, okay? It's all relative to the lifestyle that you live. I'm talking to you through the lens of me, or who I am as a as a person, as an actor, as an artist. But it's all relative to you, how you perceive yourself. As you gain achievements, okay, you cannot get there. You cannot get there without discipline 
and consistency. It's just, listen, I don't care who you are. You're not going to want to do the shit that you do all the time. But that discipline, that consistency of showing up each and every time. For me personally, yes. It's part of showing up all throughout the week on videos. Editing through the videos. You don't see the hours behind that. Doing that discipline to go out and do it. Staying consistent each and every week. Showing up to the weekly beer and video review show. I don't drink during the week. I have two beers a week for this show and this show only. Only because I have other shit I want to accomplish. I don't want to be a drunk. So I save it for this day. For that discipline. Okay? To become consistent each and every week. So find out what that is in your field of work. And apply that. That's it. You want to learn to edit, okay? That Listen, Junatic, if I told you you want to learn how to edit, you're a smart person. From what I know of you, you can do it. Just put in the discipline. Put in an hour every day, and I guarantee the consistency of every day, an hour of your time, a year later, you'll be brilliant at editing. Brilliant. Okay, you'll learn so much. Because... Yeah, the first part of it is always rocky in a little bit. Then you come out to a little plateau. And that plateau is what is what kills people. Because that plateau for a creative might be like, well, I'm not growing. I'm not getting more. I'm not getting better. I'm not doing anything new. That plateau will kill you. I, I want to quit. But in the, the retrospective of the world is like, how it is relative to you is you might be plateauing with your pay, with uh, the, the, the monotony of your job, with the everyday, you know, you don't think you're growing up within your company. You don't think you're getting more educated. You don't think you're understanding more of what you're doing. That stuff will, will definitely <clears throat> take you into the monotony world. But having the discipline to continue to show up each and every week, continue to be consistent will take you to that next level. You'll break through. You'll break through no matter what. You just keep showing up. Just keep showing up. I don't know where this show is going. It could happen five weeks from now. It could happen five months from now. It could happen five years from now. But I'm going to keep showing up. Because I believe in it. I believe in my channel. I believe in myself. So you have to do the work. You have to stay consistent. And you have to. You have to be disciplined. Because you, you, um, there's a lot of things out there now that will take you away from it. Thank you so much, Frank. Guys, I'm going to end this show. Yeah, I'm buzzed as hell. Borderline drunk. Okay? We had Uncle John come back. Hell yeah. Uncle John, Godfather. I'm so excited about that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this show where we did this fun Lost Abbey the Serpent Stout, and we did the Ching Tao. This one got an 18. This one got an 18.5. Really can't say thank you enough. I know that um, each and every week we show up. See you next week, Jens. That makes me so happy. I look forward to it each and every week. We're continuing to grow. We're continuing to grasp and build the foundation. Thank you so much for joining me on this week's show. I wish you guys a happy Valentine's, a happy Chinese New Year, happy Sunday, Elisa. I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. Wish you all the best. Thank you so much for your support. And, uh, well, thank you. Team Beer. I love it, Frank. Team Beer. I'm Travel Man Dan. And remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it. Team Beer out of here. Yes. Calvin, thank you, man. Thank you. I'll work on that accent.